Hello, welcome pen friends. Am I ever excited today because I just finally got the ink I've been wanting for so long. I received it in the mail this morning and I've been playing with it all morning. So uh, this is going to be a review on the SBRE Brown Ackerman ink that, oh wow, I tried to get it for so long and it's finally here. And look at this beautiful box. Right from the start it came in a beautiful box with a really nice protective um, piece over the, the top of the bottle and it was packed really nice. Where I finally was able to get it was from Van S. Um, I was on their waiting list type thing and now I'm going to tell you this, the full story of how, how I happened to get lucky enough to be able to order it after a while but this is the bottle. Uh, gorgeous bottle, nice and big. It's 120 milliliters of, of ink and it has the little marble in it where you um, well, I'm not going to turn it upside down. I haven't tried, played with it yet except for when it came it was full and I did let some ink out so that I could open it without any trouble. Uh, but I understand I'll have to make sure that lid is tight and then you uh, you flip it over and allow the ink to come into this part and that's how you can fill your pen. I actually fill my pen right from a little... Uh, uh, sample bottle because I don't want to contaminate my bottles. I'm just a little weird like that. That's all. But So I may not get the full benefit of the bottle, but I think it's just beautiful and it's large. So um, I'll tell you the first thing, the first challenge I had was it was really hard to open, but not a drop of ink had escaped. So what I did, I, I have this stuff in a roll that's like a shelf liner or kind of stuff you use in the kitchen. It's real grippy. So I did have to use that to open it. It was really a chore, but if, I've had a, like a flu for a week. So it, it could just be that I'm weak and my husband couldn't open it either. So I told him, don't, don't keep trying because he's really strong and I thought he might break the bottle, but I got it open after a little, maybe he loosened it. But <laughs> anyway, that's no big deal because wouldn't it be much better to have trouble opening it than to have it leak? So it was just wonderful to have it all nicely arrived safely and everything and it's just this warm beautiful brown that I knew it would be because I'd seen um, uh, Stephen's review on his ink and I got so excited about it but it's been so elusive I couldn't get it you know um, and so gosh I'm probably gonna skip all over the place but what I have determined it was $38 for the bottle and it's 120 milliliters of ink and I've determined by my math that it's um, about 32 cents for a milliliter of this ink it's it's 31.6 so I'm gonna call it 32 cents a milliliter for the ink so I started doing a couple of little calculations and I kinda of discovered that for my uh, di diamine inks it's 25 cents a milliliter what I'm paying right now here in the US the Monteverde, it's 16 and a half cents uh, per milliliter. The, my J Har Harbon uh, is 56 cents, so see that jumps way up over. And then the Robert Oster inks that I'm so crazy about is 32 cents. So I feel like, yes, this was $38, but it's a lot of ink. And so per milliliter is how you have to compare it. You just can't say, well, that bottle of ink is $38 instead of $15. You, you can't do that. You've you got to get down to the unit price just like you do in the grocery store, even though <laughs> that's not how I do my thinking about pens and inks, you know. But if you want to be fair to a product, you have to break it down to a unit price. So, I mean, I'd buy it. I would have bought it. I would have paid more. Sorry, guys, but I would have paid more. Um, I had the money saved since last month but I missed that first the December um, rush on the I think it was 150 bottles were available in the US and I I missed it you know all kinds of missed it but thank goodness for this uh, for Van Ness this is my little uh, thing from them see they're in Arkansas I, I'm not a like a big customer of them I've ordered twice before um, because I'm mostly a, a Goulet customer but um, so it was really nice to be to have this equal opportunity to get this ink, even though I'm not like a, a big spender there or anything. Um, when there's something I can't find at Goulet, I, I go and find it there or somewhere else, you know. But um, So there's the beautiful box and the wonderful packing. Everything arrived great. And then, you know, the color. I've been looking for a brown. I've been fussing and fussing for a brown that still looks really brown and nice, uh, not black and not too dark. And not too light either because I've had some kind of, you know, flops with, thank goodness it was just with uh, samples. 
So, um, gosh, I think I'm going to just uh, jump right into telling you how it is I happen to be able to get this. Because I've been sick. I did my video last Saturday, and then I got a flu. And I was sick really bad. And Wednesday of this week, I was just getting better. And uh, not better enough, though, to sit at my desk. I was feeling still lousy, but I knew if I rested, I could get better. So I'm binge watching, you know, pen videos. And all of a sudden, a little drop down on my smartphone, I saw what the email was, which is pretty rare. I usually wouldn't pay any attention. But I saw the, you know, something about this ink in the, in the subject. So I, like, stopped the, the video and pressed it. And I literally ran to my computer. And, because uh, I knew what it's like, you know, I thought, gee, that's just coming in. But if I don't do it this instant, I'm not going to get it. So I went to my computer and I couldn't really remember my password for that place. It had been a while since I ordered. Um, and, but I finally, uh, I just had them email the password and, and then it said, it gave me the option to, uh, uh, oh, uh, have a code sent to me that I'd already saved my payment information. And I thought, oh good, because by now everybody's bought this ink, right? So I pressed yes and my, the code came on my smartphone and I, uh, I, anyway, I did the transaction, and just as I was putting it in the card, it said in red letters, three left, and I thought, oh my gosh, it depends on my computer connection whether this is going to work, and it worked. It went through, but you see, I did it the instant the email came in, and normally I wouldn't have seen it that quickly, so I just want you all to know that, you know, especially if you've had frustrations getting it, yeah, it, it was that close of a call, even though I was right on it. So this is a... Uh, Oh, I usually show you the regular sample first, but this was the one that I was so excited about, the, on the Tamori River paper. Um, and this was, uh, I, I inked it up in my Gen Hao 159 that has a pretty nice Joe Wo uh, nib on it that I replaced. And I, you can see, I think, even with this lighting, you can see that it has incredible shading um, on here. And I then used my Serendipity. It's It's got a medium, uh, that's a hybrid dip pen that I've showed before on here. I've got it around here somewhere, but it's, it's pretty disturbing the mess I've made today. Um, so I still see shading and I, I still love how it looks. So you can still tell it's brown, which is just not the case with the other browns I've tried. And then I, I put in my Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, medium and I hadn't written with that pen in a while and that writing experience wasn't wasn't as good and that, it's nothing to do with the ink I don't know I, I looked at it under my loop and everything and but anyway it's scratchy <laughs> it didn't make me very happy but I think that it depends on the paper and it depends on a lot of things I'll just probably have to do some nib smoothing on that but you can still see shading even on this you know we all know the Metropolitans have an extremely um, you know thin uh, line writing. Boy, I'm still not quite thinking straight. Okay, and so that's the Tamoy River paper. And then I, of course, I worked on my uh, Rhodia pad. Um, that's what I did first, actually. And I just love how it did on that. It's just wonderful. I knew I'd love it. I could tell by by watching his video and seeing this ink and and with the experiences that I'd had with the other inks, I already kind of knew it had to be light enough. And I could tell he used several pens in his uh, video there. And I think it was in December. And uh, I'm such a fan anyway. I just, uh, and, and such an appreciative fan of the work that Stephen does in um, educating us, helping us know how to do things. And I watch, if I'm going to do something like clean a, clean a Twisby, I'll watch like his and Brian Goulet's and someone else's. You know, I'll watch two or three or four because I'm a chicken and I want to kind of figure out what's my easiest route and it's just amazing that we live in this world where we can find these things out you know we can learn um because people are so generous people like Stephen are so generous so I mean to support a product that he's you know excited about and has uh, developed with this ink company and others you know I mean what could be better really um I just you know I wrote a quick list here what I like the color is so warm it's a beautiful you know, it's a beautiful shade, and the shading, shading is my favorite trait in ink. Um, I love to see that shading, and th th doing this, doing this with this ink just made me realize how 
how it is time. I'm in kind of a newcomer, but it's time for me to get a, a flex nib of some kind. And uh, I know there's options. I could get a Zebra G nib and stick it on a Gen Hal, but I think I'm going to get a Noodler's Ahab because I do like to tinker with pens. And I don't, I'm not afraid at all about, you know, getting messy or ruining it. I, you know, I can get a box of them, I guess, eventually. I mean, my pen allowance is spent right now, let me tell you. But, um, so it's a beautiful warm color. I love the bottle. I, I'm intrigued by the how the marble kind of holds the ink up there for you so that you can fill your pen. Uh, um, in my case, I just used my ink syringe to get in there and get some out once I had, um, it already had the ink all the way up to here. So, And then the price per milliliter is very good. I mean, I just think 22, uh, 32 cents or 31 and a half cents, you know, that compares with the other inks. Of course, you know, Monteverde is, is lower, uh, J. Herbon is higher, Robert Oster is only two cents away, you know. Um, and that's, those are the ones I, my favorites are the Diam Diamine inks and Robert Oster's right now. They're just my favorites. Um, and then I just, I just wanted a brown ink that would look brown and work on all my notebooks. And in a minute I'll show you my favorite journal. Um, the other thing, it's kind of an emotional kind of thing. Kind of a, you know, but this color, this shade reminds me of, of Vermont. And that's where I grew up. That's where, you know, a good piece of my heart is. Um, it reminds me of crunching over leaves in the fall. And and it's like, can bring that to me any time of year. And I live now in South Texas where we have two seasons. Hotter than hell and bearable. That's it. That's all we get. So, you know, and I, you know, I'm exaggerating. We have maybe five days a year that it's cool and crisp and kind of, you know, in between, but mostly it's, it's just extremes. I love, you know, I love October, but when October comes to South Texas, <laughs> you need a little help in kind of feeling the season. So I love the color for emotional reasons. And, um, I already told you, you know, how it is that I was, I was so sick that I got lucky enough to order this because I saw the email come right in. So hopefully I'm not missing out on on too many things that I wanted to say about it. I did want to show you, let's see, I mean, let me move this just for a second, because this is my favorite journal, and uh, as you can see, <laughs> this ink is like really, uh, really compliments this journal, but then inside too, because I wrote, I wrote in here, I wrote a kind of a little emotional piece about how much I love fountain pens, you know, but uh, it, it did really well in here too. And I don't know if you can see, cause I'm kind of looking over the top of my reading glasses and all of that, but there's shading and this is with the broad nib. So, and this is nice paper made in Italy. It doesn't bleed through or anything. So it's going to be a practical and daily ink for me, even though kind of in a way I, I'd be worried because I don't know when the next time is I could ever get some. So, you know, um, but I'm not going to think that way because I know he mentioned that eventually the supply would, you know, catch up with the demand and that kind of thing. And I know how that works. I'm sure eventually there'll be more than enough. But the other thing I wanted to say was this really kind of got me thinking about my going forward with my pens because I mean you know I love all my pens even my cheaper pens you all know that um I you know let me take a breath <laughs> uh but what it made me kind of think about was going forward um I just really would love a nice pen that would showcase this brown and if I'm going to do that, I got to stop nickeling and diming myself with pen purchases. You know, the latest uh, two dollar Gen Hao from whatever from China. You know, I've got I've got to save up if I want like a a beautiful brown, you know, kind of nice pen in in, in a higher end category. I, I've got to kind of change, and that's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting because I certainly have enough of the pens and lower pens. Of course, this is the Pilot Metropolitan I used, and then. Um, this Gen Hao doesn't exactly match up with brown, but I just, I liked it because I have that broad nib on it. And then, <laughs> seems like I've buried my, gosh, I don't even know where I put my dip pen. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, you all have seen it on another video, but the dip pen worked really well. That's that middle one. I can see writing letters, um, next month with that and just dipping it in. And I found that I can put that in a little plastic bag the end of it and it'll uh, stay even overnight so that pen just holds an incredible amount of ink with one dip so 
<sighs> okay, so excited here. Um, but I don't want to end my video until I uh, talk about a crystal. So this crystal is kind of fitting. See how it's brown and it's it's pretty. Um, it's a very special one too. I don't think I have. Oh yeah, I do. I was going to say I don't have the thing in the right place. It's aragonite. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I don't pronounce these crystals very well. And these pictures don't match up, but this is uh, aragonite. And um, it's a grounding stone. It's what people talk about it being um, good for um, not being entirely up in your mind, in your head. Um, of course, this is the Crystal Bible from Judy Hall. And so I'll read a little bit about it here. It, uh, I wasn't really pleased with the explanation in this book, but it does have some. It says, um, Aragonite teaches patience and acceptance. It combats oversensitivity. It's good for people who push themselves too hard, and it facilitates delegating. Its practical energy encourages discipline and reliability and develops a pragmatic approach to life. Mentally, this stone aids concentration on the matter at hand and brings flexibility and tolerance to the mind. It gives insight into the causes of problems and situations. Emotionally, aragonite combats anger and emotional stress. All I could tell you is I've about worn this one out. I got kind of worried because I don't know if you can see, but I, I put it in my jeans pocket for over a year. It was my main crystal that I knew I needed, even though this was before I got this book. I mean, I had no idea at that point. I just knew when I saw it, I was attracted to the crystal. And the lady in the shop said, go with what your gut tells you. You don't have to know about all the crystals. So, I think that's my... I was going to say scope because I periscope all the time. Uh, I think that's my video for today. And I hope this helps someone to, you know, know what this ink looks like. And, and uh to uh, not give up, never give up if you're trying to get something that's hard to get because one day you may be sick and then get the email at just the right time. No. <laughs> just fooling. But um, I am really happy to have this and I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm trying to think of, you know, uh, ways to share it also because that's 120 milliliters of ink. That's a lot. I'm actually thinking about a, a little giveaway, but I haven't got it all figured out and I haven't got my mailing supplies in vials. I, I This was like my last little vial. But I'd really like to do that and I, I plan to. So, you know, that uh, will be upcoming. And thank you very much for viewing and um, add, add comments. Let's talk about this. I really enjoy the conversation that follows these videos and I appreciate every one of you for viewing and everybody who makes videos. Um, this is the only way that I can connect with people that love fountain pens because I don't have anybody in my, quote, real life who is into fountain pens. I haven't been successful at converting uh, anybody yet, but I'm on the job. So, <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next video. Bye now.